All right, so here's a little down and dirty video of some of the new features that we just uh, introduced in version 5.2. Many changes, like over 75 changes in the PC version, over 68, I think, in the Mac version. Uh, but here's some of the major ones uh, to take note of and uh, hopefully get you guys excited. First off is uh, we have Premiere Pro support now for Adobe users. So you can see I have Premiere over here on the left and then... Um, the right to install this, you just go to the typical target applications, select Premiere Pro, and hit hit install over here, and then install the panel. And you can see in Premiere I have this panel. This has to be open always when you're using Basehead with Premiere Pro, which is kind of a requirement from Adobe. And um, so yeah, gotta have it open. This gives and this gives the ability of the typical uh, file session folder, auto switch and pass, and you can see your active project here. And uh, when file session folder is on, it will switch your transfer path down here to the session that is currently open in Premiere. But Premiere doesn't have an audio files folder. So we actually make a little subfolder called BH audio, underscore BH audio next to your session folder. Just so it has somewhere to put the files to keep it nice and neat for you. So just like any other program, you can select a file, select base head, select a section of it, hit S, you see it fly over to Premiere. Um, here's where you select what track to go on. This is A1 through 5 here. Uh, so, so if you want to select this file, hit S, flies over just like Pro Tools, just like Nuendo. Hit X, select a couple of them, hit X, it flies just to the bin over here now instead, instead of to going to the track. And that's pretty much it. This is just like any other DAW, but it's hardwired now. Before we had it for the PC that you can throw things to the bin, but it wouldn't go to the track. Um, so it's, it's definitely a step above where it was. All right, so uh, another major feature added in version two is performance recordings. So now you get to open up the playlist to the left here, and we have a record button here for Ultra users now. This is only for Ultra currently. So uh, what this allows you to do is to capture pitch bends, grab the pitch effects, turn knobs on the VST, VSTs and actually record it to a new file. So, example, let's take a little section of this file and we drop in record. I'm going to grab the pitch effects, move it all around like, like a crazy person. And then you see it's recording here, and then we're going to drop it out of record, stop. And on the playlist, you'll see a new uh, file added in red with a PERF. For performances, add it to the front of it, click that, and we see what we just did. And this new file, you, you can choose where it goes. You can choose if it goes to the temp folder or to your transfer path. If you, if you select it to go to your temp folder, this is going to, if you restart basic, this is going to be gone if you didn't send this to your DAW. So it's kind of a use it or lose it type thing. So you definitely want to throw those to Pro Tools or Nuendo or Reaper before you quit Basehead if you have this set to your temp folder. We recommend actually having it on your temp folder because you might record like 10, 12 things and only really want to use two of them. But you can also, if you do record your, your transfer path, you can actually hit this delete button. And, and in the case of this being set to a, a performance file, it will actually delete it from the, the hard drive. And you can also s select what you want your output file to be. So if you're doing a 5.1, File, if you're messing with that, pitching it up and down, you want to set this to 5.1. But by default, we set it to stereo, and we also set it to your temp folder here. So let's do this again. So uh, let's pick a file. Get this guy, zoom in on it. Drop and record. Drop it out of record. And hit stop. And there we have it. Another great thing about the system is you can just keep recording takes over and over until you get the one you like. Uh, so, like, say, let's loop this guy. Drop and record. So, we like that one. Let's try another file. Drop that and record. Keep that into the playlist. Yeah, we like this file. And that adds a 
to the playlist also. So you can just keep going until you find the one you like and then uh, use it. You know, like clean up the ones you don't, want, you don't want in the end. So you're not limited to just record one file at a time. So I hope you guys get a lot of use out of that feature. And on to the next one. Probably one of the most requested features we had for a while is to be able to pitch higher than 192. Uh, especially because a lot of libraries are 192 now, so, and in the past, you can only go as high as 192. Because the, the slider here, the main pitch slider, would go from, say, 50 hertz up to 192, and that's it. Uh, so we actually added two new modes to this. So now you have a percentage mode, and you have a semitone mode. So if you wanted to go higher than 192, you just put it on percentage mode, and you can go up 200% higher than it was originally. And then also, by popular demand, we added a lock button. So now you can lock the pitch slider so it doesn't change based on which record, the next record you click on. So it stays locked. And then also, the third main feature we've heard in the same realm of things is, as uh, the pitch slider is the ability to type in numbers. So now you can double click right here and say, I want everything up 35% and have it locked. And now everything's playing 35% higher. Always. So another new feature slash behavior change uh, we added is to the, the loop cycle button here. Uh, in the past, if you played short files, or any whole file actually, when it gets to the end, it would stop playing. This is by design, especially if you're playing like punch sounds, beeps, it's going to be really annoying that this would loop. So uh, by design, we always had that off. So, but now, if you grab any kind of pitch slider, or say the pitch effects over here, it's gonna, it's gonna change this icon to green, and then it's gonna go into loop mode. So let me show you. So here you go, so now it turns green, it's gonna start looping now. So we figure, if you grab a slider, you're gonna wanna tweak something. So once again, if I play the same file, again, without clicking it, and you can see it's gonna stop at the end. Just like before. So that's a little little enhancement, it's a little thing, but uh, I think it's gonna be fairly useful for most people, just so you don't have to, because in the past you'd have to select, if you wanna hear this whole thing, you'd have to select it like that to get it to loop, which just can be annoying, I can understand. Um, or, or you have to hit the, the, the restart button over and over, but now you just click it, grab a slider, and, and engage in smart loop mode, and off you go. Other things worth mentioning in this video are, that we just added, uh, let's see here, new window 10 support. The latest Pro Tools is also working good in this. And same with Reaper, of course. Uh, let's back to new window. Also, Rewire's complete overhaul for PC and it's also for Mac now also. So make sure you run the full installer to get that to work. Um, trying to think what else we got here. Markers. Well, I'm looking at them here. The markers now, these actually show on the tag list and actually transfer to new files. So, say this file I have here, if we actually pitch it up or down make, to make a new file, let's reselect it. So I got this new file, it's gonna be nice and long. Because it's super slow, and hit tag. Now let's look at it in the tag list. You can see all the markers transferred into the new file also. Also, .NET 4.8. It works on that for the PC. It should be working fine with Mac OS 10.15 Catalina. Uh, another thing to mention is individual channel extraction, which is limited only to Ultra, and uh, actually to only Ultra before. These work now in light and in, um, in standard also. So you can hit one or two, you just grab the left or right side of a file now. And also mono actually should work too also. And the mono button will actually sum it down to mono that will also work on standard and light now. And another feature that we brought over for process users that used to be Nuendo and Cubase exclusive is the ability to set a sync point and have it spot to track with this offset. So the way to set a sync point is you hold on Alt and you click on the waveform. So say we want to put one in this file right there. We have one marked. You can delete it also by hitting the X here. You can move it around, all that good stuff, just, just like any other marker. But now when you drop a cursor down in Pro Tools, and then you come back to base head and you hit S, it's gonna spot it right where that save point is. 
So this is handy if you have a lot of, you know, go through your car buys in your library and then just mark the peak of the car buy. And then when you hit S, it's always going to spot it at the peak. That's what I use it mostly for. Um, let's do it again. Uh, I better, it's the same file. So let's move it over to here. Let it spot. There we have it. So that can be pretty handy. And, and another one of the last improvements I'm going to mention in this video is uh, we did some changes with the, uh, the yellow range. By default, they said it's always set to uh, to zoom in on the waveform when you click and zoom, click, click, a, click and wipe across it. But more and more people seem like they don't want that behavior. So we actually proved the non-zoom behavior a little bit. So now when you select the region here, it's easier to grab the, the front and the end. It re triggers the playback whenever you reset it. Also at the top, you can move the whole in and out all at once. And then you can see when you move the mouse at the top third of the waveform, it turns to the hand and that allows you just to grab it straight from there. So now you just select the section, grab it right from the middle without having to go to the drag and drop bar. It's pretty much exactly the same as the drag and drop bar, but now you can just drag it from like the middle of the waveform. As long as you're in the top third, you know, we might make this hot spot a little bit bigger, but right now it's, it's in the top third. So it's a little bit less mouse movement for you. And also for people that ha have base head on their left screen, because right now it's mostly designed for base head to be on the right screen, so you can drag it from here over, over to your DAW. But if you're a type of user that has it on the right screen, you can just select wherever you want and just drag it off, off to the right instead. So anyway, hopefully that helps. And that's pretty much it. Best thing to do is look at the release notes. There's like 75 plus changes for PC and like 68 or something like that for Mac. You can find that on the main downloads page, so give it a download and try it out for yourself, but make sure your support plan is active, otherwise you're going to get an error and you're going to have to roll back. So look in the start screen and uh, see when your license support plan ended and make sure it's not yet, and then uh, give it a download and give it a play and let's know how it goes. See ya.